In this tutorial, we're going to create a C4 detonator. Learn to create mayhem in this week's file base breakdown. Hey guys, I'm John with GameDevHQ and we bring you content every week focusing on Unity. Our goal is turning you all into amazing game developers and self-taught software engineers. So like the video, hit the subscribe button, and tune in for more amazing content. So here we are in Unity 2019.1. I've already downloaded from GameDevHQ's file base all of the assets we're going to need. The primary asset is the C4 detonator tool out of our weapons pack, and that's going to give us a C4 brick as well as the actual detonator, which I've already set up underneath our character controller within the main camera so that it moves around with us. The goal here is that we're going to be able to cast a raycast in front of us to interact with our environment, and if we hit a surface, we're going to instantiate a C4 brick brick. So the first thing we need to do is create a place C4 script. And once we create that, we can attach this directly to our detonator here. Let's open this in Visual Studio. And the first thing I need to do here is I need to create the logic for placing the C4. So how do I want to handle that? The first thing I want to do is I want to check if I left click. So here, if left click, then what are we going to do? We'll raycast in front of us, let's say through the center of the camera. So that, that's typically how you'll have interactions in games. How I know I'm touching a surface is I'm going to be able to interact using a raycast. So here I'm going to left click, I'm going to raycast in front of us through the center of the camera, and then we're going to instantiate a C4 brick. So that's the logic. So now let's go ahead and take that pseudocode and turn it into actual code. So the first thing is if we left click. This one's pretty easy. We create an if statement. And then here we'll use the input manager and we'll get mouse button down. And the mouse button I'm looking for is going to be zero for left click, one for right click. And then now that I'm left clicking, let's create our raycast. It starts with a ray, ray origin variable. So here is our origin. And the origin is going to cast directly through the main camera. Now the way we do this is I need to use my viewport space. So here is our viewport space. It's everything the actual game view can see. I want to cast a ray directly through the center. And the way we do that is by creating a vector to define the center of the screen. And if we actually were to look at the scripting reference for viewport, there is a method here called viewport point to ray. And what this is going to do is returns a ray going from the camera through a viewport point. And if you look at their example here, they have a ray ray origin variable equal to the main camera, the viewport point to ray method, and then they're passing in a vector that defines the middle of the screen. So the middle of the screen is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. If you were to think of it as a grid, 0, 0 is in the bottom left, 0 0.5, and then 0 0.5 gets us directly in the center. So that's what we're going to use. So ray origin is going to equal a camera.main function. So we're going to access the main camera, and then we're going to use that viewport point to ray. And when I open a parenthesis here, it's looking for a vector three position. Define the coordinates of where you'd like to cast a ray from your viewport. So here we're going to specify a new vector three, and I'm going to say middle of the screen on the X, middle of the screen on the Y. And I'm just going to close it off like that. So that is going to define our ray origin. The next part here is what, what happens if I hit something? I need to be able to access the object I hit because I'm going to place a C4 brick on it. So I need to create a variable of type raycast hit and call it hit info. Now hit info is going to store information about anything our raycast hit. The next step is to actually cast the ray. So here we say if physics.raycast, and then we have 16 options. What I'm interested is in the one where we can cast the ray from the ray ray origin, output the info, and then choose a distance. So here we'll say ray origin, I'm going to say output the hit info. So anything that we hit is going to be stored in hit info. And then the distance, I want to say 1.0f. I want it to be one meter in front of our player. That way we can't place a C4 brick across the hall. You actually have to walk up to it. Okay, so if we hit something, it's going to be stored in out hit info. And the next step here is what do we do with that information? Well. We did the raycasting in front of us through the center of the camera. That goes here. 
The next step is to instantiate a C4 brick, and that happens inside this if statement. If this if statement gets called, it means we hit a surface or something with a collider with, from our Raycast. So I'm going to simply instantiate an object, and the object we're going to instantiate is a C4 brick. So we need a variable that's going to store that C4 brick in our script. So here we'll say private game object, and we'll call this C4 prefab. And then to serialize this field will allow us to assign it in the inspector. Now we can actually instantiate this. So I'm going to say instantiate, and I'm going to say underscore C4 brick. And then here at the transform position. Now the position of this is going to be unique. I don't want it to be on my position. I want it to be at the position that our Raycast hit. So I'm going to access the information of what we hit, which is stored in hit info. And then I'm going to say dot point. That's the actual colliding point of our Raycast. From there, I want the rotation to be on the surface normal of our, of our crate. So if I hit a wall, for example, I need our C4 brick to appear perpendicular to the wall. So to do that, we can access a function called quaternion.lookrotation, and that's going to pass in a vector3 forward direction. And what I can pass in here is the object we hit, so for example, a wall, and I can get the normal of that wall, and we will place our object on that orientation. All right, so here we have our physics raycast. We're instantiating a C4 brick, and if we go ahead and save this, we can go ahead and click on our detonator script. We need to assign a prefab, which is this C4 here. And then if we actually were to test this out, I should be able to walk up to our crate here, just like this, and attach a brick, just like that. And I can attach multiple bricks. And if I'm too far, I can't attach any, but if I walk up to it, we can attach a brick. All right, so phase one is done. The next part is going to be actually detonating what we place. Now the way we're going to want to do this is I only want to be able to place one C4 so that I can control the detonation of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a variable that's going to determine if we have already placed a brick. So here we can say private bool and we'll say C4 placed. By default it's going to be set to false. And then what we're going to do here is instantiate a C4 brick. And as soon as we do that we want to say C4 placed is equal to true. Now, once that's true, we should no longer be able to play C4. So here, I'm going to check if we left click and underscore C4 placed is false. That way, we can actually run this code. As soon as it's true, we're never going to hop back in here again. The next part of this is going to actually being able to control the detonation. So how do we go about doing that? Right now, I can place the C4, but how do I detonate it? Well. I want to be able to detonate it from this script. I want to be able to say here, like if I hit the E key, for example. So if input dot get key down, and if I were to hit the E key, how do I go ahead and detonate that? I want to detonate the C4. In order to do that, we need a behavior script on the C4 itself, and I need a reference to that C4 that I've placed. So let's create the behavior for the C4. So the way we're going to do this is we will create a new C Sharp script here. By right clicking, go to create a new C Sharp script, and let's call this C4. And we should be okay just calling it C4. Now this is going to be a behavior script that's attached to the C4 device. And this C4 is responsible for detonating. So we are going to get a reference to this object when we instantiate it, and we're going to call a detonate method on it. So we're not going to use void update or void start. All we're going to do here is we're going to have a behavior here that's going to trigger the explosion. I'm simply going to say public void detonate. And that's all this script is behavior is that's all the functionality we need. It's responsible for detonating. So here when we call detonate, what's going to happen? We need to explode, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a reference to an explosion particle. So I've already downloaded from our game dev HQ file base the explosion particle, and I can just create a variable to store that in. So here we're going to say private game object, and then here we'll have explosion. And then we will serialize this so I can add it in the inspector, and we'll call this explosion prefab. And then what we're going to need to do is call the detonate method. And when I do that, we are going to instantiate the explosion. 
So here we're going to say instantiate, we'll say explosion prefab at the transform.position of the C4 and then the quaternion.identity. I don't care about the rotation or anything like that. I just want to instantiate an explosion at the C4 position. And that's it. So what we need to do now is how do I call this method? Well, I instantiate the C4 directly right here. So why not get a reference to that C4? So what I can do here is private bool C4 place. I can only place one C4. So what I could do here is I can say private C4 and let's call this active C4. And right now it's not assigned, but what I could do is I could assign it as soon as I instantiate the C4 so that I have a reference to the exact C4 that we created. So here I'm saying C4 underscore activated C4. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a variable to store the object we instantiate. I can do this by creating a game object variable. And from there, we'll call this go equals the instantiate method. And what's going to happen here is it's automatically going to store the referenced object of what we instantiated in this game object variable. Now, you used to have to do a cast for this, but as of Unity 2018, you no longer have to. But you may have used to seen this where you would actually have to type out, um, you would say your instantiate method as a game object. And there's no problem keeping it like that. If you want to, you can still cast it. And I'll go ahead and keep it because you might be familiar with seeing it that way. But for game object types, you no longer need to do this. For other types, I believe you do. Okay, so we have our game object. And what I want to do now is I'm going to assign our active C4. So once we instantiate the object, I can access properties on it. And one of the properties that are on it is our C4 script. So to do that, I'm going to access the game object and assign our C4. So active C4 equals the go dot transform dot get component. And then what component am I looking for off the active C4? I'm looking for the C4 script. And once I have it, I can just assign it. Here, the active C4 is assigned. And then here, I'm checking to see if we can detonate. So if input.getKeyDownKeyCode.E and we'll say C4 placed equals true, that means that we placed a C4 and we can now detonate it. What we're going to do is we're going to call the active C4 dot detonate. Let's save this, hop into Unity. Let's click on our C4 prefab here. We're going to have to assign the explosion prefab, which you can see here. It's looking for a prefab. And if we go into our VFX from Game Dev HQ's file base, we have an explosion prefab, and we'll just put that in there. From there, we can save our scene. And then let's run this. So I'm going to go ahead and place some C4. I'm going to back up, hit the E key and we now have an explosion. The last thing we could have done here is that when we create the explosion, we could have deleted the actual C, uh, C4 device. So to do that, it's a simple thing here of instantiate. As soon as we create the explosion effect, we're just gonna say destroy this game object. And that's going to remove the C4 device. Now, if you followed along in one of our other tutorials, we actually create a tutorial on exploding this exact crate. So you can actually follow along and complete this exercise. So let's go ahead and place it down, back up, hit the E key, and there you go. I'll see you guys next week.